Hey, SBC students, we're back together tonight talking about the change-up. We're talking about changing the I can't mentality to the he will mentality. All of us have moments of inadequacy in our lives, and the thought of I can't creeps up on us regularly. But the truth is that our adequacy and ability isn't determined by what we do or fail to do. Instead, it's determined by the fact that God is with us. Realizing that we can do nothing apart from Christ is really one of the essential discoveries that every Christian needs to make. Just as God was with Moses, as we'll see tonight, God will be with us every moment and will supply us what we need in order to do what he's called us to do. Tonight, we're going to be looking at Exodus chapter 3 and chapter 4. So if you want to grab your copy of God's Word and look there with me, I encourage you to do that. The story of Moses, though, begins really with the story of the children of Israel 400 years before Moses was born. Joseph, one of Moses' ancestors, had moved to Egypt as a slave. He was sold into slavery by his own brothers and had risen in the ranks through a lot of different stories and trials and tribulations to be the second in command over all of Egypt. During Joseph's days, there was a severe famine in the land, and Joseph wanted to provide for his family. So he brought his family from the land of Canaan into Egypt to provide for them. So Joseph brought them. There was a group of about 70 people that loaded up and moved their belongings to Egypt so that they could live in the provisions that God had made and provided there through Joseph. Now, by the time Moses was born, Joseph's family of 70 had grown into the nation of Israel that we know of today and really numbered about 2 million people at this point in time. This is where the book of Exodus really begins in the story. The Bible tells us that a new Pharaoh had come to power in Egypt, and this new Pharaoh didn't know who Joseph was. Under his rule, the Israelites went from being guests to being slaves. The new Pharaoh, you see, was afraid of their massive numbers and that they might take control of Egypt, and so he enslaved them and sent them to making bricks for his building projects. But enslaving them really wasn't even enough. This Pharaoh also commanded the, the Egyptian midwives to execute all the male Israelite babies that they delivered. So Pharaoh was basically trying to control Israel, to keep Israel under control through slavery and genocide. So that brings us to the story of Moses. This is the situation that he was born into. And in this situation, God chose Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. In Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, the Bible tells us how Moses miraculously went from a baby who was protected by God to an adopted prince of Egypt. Now, although he was an adopted prince in Egypt, he was still an Israelite, and he knew that he was an Israelite. So one day, Moses saw an Egyptian um, treating a, a, an Israelite harshly, fighting with him and, and, and beating him. And so he, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the sand. And so some of the Israelites saw what happened. They saw what Moses did, and now Moses gets afraid, and so Moses flees into the desert. He runs away. Forty years later, though, God comes calling on Moses again in the desert. And here's the conversation that God had with Moses in the desert. Look at Exodus chapter 3, and we'll begin in verse 7. It says this, The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? 
And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought these people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in, the, in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people, so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. In chapter 4, verse 1, it says this, Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me or say, The Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground, and it became a snake, and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake, and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, the Lord said, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, If they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground the water you take from the river will become blood on the ground Moses said to the Lord pardon your servant Lord I have never been eloquent neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant I am slow of speech and tongue the Lord said to him who gave human beings their mouths who makes them deaf or mute who gives them sight or makes them blind is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you, and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. But take this staff in your hands so you can perform the signs with it. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. So Moses was very afraid. He is in a conversation with God, and he is so afraid that he, he is even bold enough to basically tell God no several times. But God continued to answer every one of Moses' objections. By the time of today's passage, Moses, Moses had gone from being a prince in Egypt to a runaway shepherd on the backside of the desert. And then God called Moses. So how is this runaway shepherd from nowhere supposed to march back into Egypt confront Pharaoh, and lead two million people to freedom. He wasn't a good speaker. His only attempt at leading and delivering his people so far had led him to run away to the desert. Plus, the Israelites were Pharaoh's workforce. He wasn't just going to let them go. 
This was an, an insurmountable task in Moses' mind. There was no way that this was going to work, or so Moses thought. If you put yourself in Moses' shoes, it's easy to see how he must have felt overwhelmed and not up to the task that God had called him to. It's easy to see how the deceptive words, I can't, had taken hold in Moses' life. Moses needed to change his way of thinking. He needed to remember that God was going to be with him. Even when Moses felt the I can't doubt arise in his mind, he needed to remember that God promised to be with him. Moses needed to switch I can't to he will. By understanding that his past failure didn't limit his potential for future success. You see, the truth is that our ability to do anything is all about the fact that God is with us. It's not determined by what we do or fail to do. We will all face times in our lives when our confidence is shaken. We'll all face times when we're not nearly as good as we thought we were. We'll have moments of inadequacy in our lives. And the thought of, I can't, will continue to creep in on us. And the truth is that these moments come to remind us of something that we all need to, to live in every single day. The truth is that these moments of inadequacy come to remind us that in reality, we can't do it by ourselves. Think about that. These moments of inadequacy need to remind us that we can't do it on our own. That's actually what Jesus said and taught. In John chapter 15 and verse 5, Jesus said these words, For without me, you can do nothing. It's okay to be inadequate. That's who we are. God knows that when he calls us to do things. He knows that we are inadequate. It's actually an essential discovery that we all need to make. We're inadequate. And we can't do anything apart from Christ. You see, it's not that Jesus is saying, listen, you can't do anything, and so you'll never be anything, and you'll never achieve anything. That's not what Jesus is saying. Instead, Jesus is saying that he will accomplish his plans, and he is inviting us to join him in his work. Our significance comes only when we join Jesus. God could have freed the Israelites all by himself. All on his own, he could have done it. But he offered Moses a seat at the table where Moses began to see God's plan unfold. Moses got a center stage view of what God was doing in redeeming and restoring his people. And guess what? He's offering the same seat at the table to you. He wants you to be a part of his work in this world. Fear and and inadequacy are real. But it's God who is with us. Just like he was with Moses, God will be with us every single moment. Listen to me. If fear is attempting to deceive you into thinking that you're inadequate, don't fall for it. When you feel like you don't measure up or like you don't have what it takes to conquer the challenge before you, Remember that success is not about you or what you can do or what you can't do. The key to pulling the plug on inadequacy is allowing the love of God to infiltrate your life. When this happens, you'll realize that God promises to be with you in every challenge. When God's love begins to permeate your thinking, you will remember constantly, He's with me. He will accomplish his plans. I'm inadequate. I can't do this, but he will. So when fear tries to make you think, I can't, pull the change up and lift your head. Look fear in the face and say, fear, you're right. I can't, but he will. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that your presence is with us at all points in time. God, you are so good. No matter what is coming down the road for us as your people in this world, God, we see the world falling apart. It seems like no matter what is coming, you are with us. And so we can have confidence and we can be used, God. Thank you for that.
that you are inviting us not to just endure the trials of this life, but to make a difference in this world. Help us to find our strength in our, and our confidence in your presence in our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray that. Amen.